Hello gorgeous flower pots, it's Sunday, it's 12 noon, I'm sat at kitchen table, only one thing for it, it must be time for me to service you because it is Sunday. Hello gorgeous flower pots, hasn't it been quite a time since I've come live and done a Sunday service? or even a night time with Nelly. Hello, Andrew Washington and Victoria Buckley. Thank you very much for joining me. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening, wherever you may be watching me from. How are we all? Are we all well? It's taken quite a lot of time to get any dear Auntie Nellies in the inbox. Hello, down under Bronwyn Harrison. Good afternoon, Tracy Jones. How are we all? I haven't come live for some time because we've had nothing in the inbox. So either people are too afraid to write into the page or, or everything's going absolutely hunky-dory. But we have got some Sunday services for today. So just to let you know that when you do write into the page, it is all anonymous. So don't be worried about me reading your name out. Also, I always think a problem shared is a problem solved. And any advice I do give is purely for entertainment purposes. Hello, Helen in Lanzarote. So I can't come live if I've got no dear Auntie Nelly. If that's a Sunday or a Wednesday. So if you do have any problems, then feel free to write into the page. As I said, any advice I give is purely for entertainment purposes. If anybody does comment on your comments with prize, giveaway, gift, competition, it is a scam, don't fall for it. If anybody starts trolling as I'm talking, ignore it and they will get removed by the actual Facebook team, so don't worry. Good morning in Boston, USA. Cheryl, how are you this morning? Hello, Martin. Hello. Can't wait for nighttime life, says Ashley. Well, unless I get any dear Auntie Nellie's, there's not going to be a nighttime with Nelly. Because one thing I don't do, um, even though people think I do, is write the problems. I don't do it. I wait for them to fall into the box. I think the beauty of Sunday service and nighttime with Nelly is we don't know what I'm going to read out. I don't read them beforehand. So any advice I do give, like I said, is for entertainment purposes, it's purely off the cuff. So we get to see what the problem is together for the first time. Who has got their panto tickets? Who's coming watching me in Sleeping Beauty pantomime? I am the good fairy this time. I was on the bad side last time, if you can remember. I was the evil stepmother. But I will be in Bolton from the 19th of November right through the 24th of December. And then I will be up in Aberdeen. Never been to Aberdeen, so I'm very excited. And that is where we will be um, doing it at the Tivoli Theatre. So, Janet from Bolton. Good morning, Nicola Hardy. Hello. Hi from High Wycombe, says Jan Savin. My fam I have family in High Wycombe. And Lindsay is watching from Malaga, Spain. Lisa's in West London. Nikki Wilson's just joined. It is so lovely to see you all. And thank you, Lorraine, for joining from Down Under. Love that colour on you, sweetheart. Yeah, it's a, a chestnut conker, isn't it? So, shall we get going with the very first Dear Antonelli of Sunday service? It's Sunday, I'm here to service you. Hmm? Morning and I'll wipe Sue Kelly. We do, Lisa. We have the whole world. Hi, Auntie Nelly. I need your help with a guy I have been talking to but only met twice in four weeks. Oh. I have been on my own for seven years. I lost my husband. Very sorry for your loss. I recently joined a dating site and I was ready to meet somebody. Okay. So I started chatting to this guy. We hit it off straight away. We met for the first time on the 28th of August and again on the 4th of September. But since then, nothing. Oh, I have dropped numerous hints about wanting to see him again, but nothing ever comes of it. He says he likes me and wants to see me again, but doesn't do anything about it. We chat every day, all day on WhatsApp. He says goodnight to me and sends me sloppy kisses. 
But when I bring up about mating, he doesn't want to meet. I never really get an answer. He sort of skirts around the question. He has told me though that early next year he must make a big decision regarding his job and he may have to move to Southampton. Could this be what's holding him back? I don't know what to do. I keep asking about meeting up. The last time was the 10th of September because I don't want to be desperate. But if I don't ask, I'll never know. Please help me. This is the first man I've had feelings for since my late husband, thanks. Hiya, Hannah, in Accrington. I always say, right, you've met up with him twice. You've had a nice time. He says he likes you. He's spending all day WhatsApping you and sending you good night, sweetheart, and fucking kisses. Not being funny, but you're looking for a partner. You're looking for somebody that you want to start having a relationship with. You're not looking for a fucking pen pal, are you? So that's what, the minute you've got, you've got a pen pal. And I'm not being funny, but I had a pen pal when we were back in primary school. You're an adult and you're wanting a relationship. So don't ask again because it does make you look desperate. And I always say this. The minute that you make me feel that I'm darkening your doorstep or I'm begging, believe me, I will never bother you again. Do not bother the people that won't bother, won't, well, it can't be a catfish because she's met him twice. So do not bother anybody that makes you feel like you're darkening the doorstep. He could not be single. It might have been a bit of fun to him. He's looking for a fucking pen pal. Or yeah, he might be moving to Portsmouth. So what's the fucking point of wanting to start a relationship with somebody that's not even going to be fucking local? So I'm proud of you for actually joining a dating site and moving on in the sense of where you feel ready to maybe embark on a relationship. Look at that two-time meet with him as a suck it and see. Get back on dating app and meet somebody who actually wants to see you on a more regular basis. Just look at it as like a bit of a test drive. That's all you have to do. Okay, so that's my advice. Antonelli's real advice, always purely for entertainment purposes, as I've said. But yes, um, yeah, just don't, don't. And yeah, he could well be married. He could be in another relationship. He could be having you in archives because he's seen somebody else and he's not quite sure who he likes the most but don't keep asking him to meet you've asked him once he's not told you when don't fucking ask again go and meet somebody that wants to meet you moving on dear auntie nelly in october last year in lockdown i met a girl online on facebook dating oh christ a year ago we hit it off from day one and in nine months together we never had a single argument okay Something new to me because my previous relationship was very toxic. I am a transgender man and this was my first relationship as my true self. She said I was her soulmate and no matter what life threw at us, we should deal with it together. Last month I had a mental breakdown because life just got on top of me and I felt suicidal and it was the first time that she ghosted me. A month later, I'm still trying to figure out what I did wrong and why she felt the need to block me on all forms of contact. I treat her like a queen and I'm struggling to understand why she wasn't there for me when I needed her the most and just cut me off. Advice, any advice would be greatly appreciated. Goodness me. Okay, so regardless of how you identify, regardless of how long you've been in this relationship, regardless of what's been said at the beginning, in the middle or at the end, maybe you've put the fear of God into her. Maybe she doesn't know how to deal with people who suffer with a mental illness. Maybe she doesn't know what to do if you are feeling suicidal. Maybe it's triggered her. Maybe she's had people in her past who have maybe committed suicide. Um, maybe... Maybe it's a, a, a road that she doesn't feel that she's uh, strong enough to go down. Maybe she feels she can't be there for you because she's got her own demons. I think sometimes when people back out of people's lives, there will be reason for it, but not everybody is always strong and brave enough to stand up and say what it is. But maybe she thought 
I can't handle this. I don't mind that you're transgender. We're having a great time. Our relationship's fine. But then you have a mental breakdown and you tell her that, you, you know, you're feeling... Did you say you were feeling suicidal or you tried to commit suicide or you felt suicidal and she may have absolutely fucking shit a brick and thought, whoa, I don't know what to do here. I'm way out my depth. I'm not a professional. This is too much for me. And she's run for fucking hells. You know what? Not everybody in life is like that. Not everybody in life is going to let go of your hand when you need them most. Not everybody. But just because she has let go of your hand when you needed her most, that 12 months in tells you that she's not for you because when we're in a relationship we're in a relationship for the good and the bad the ups the downs relationships are hard work and they are roller coasters not every day is about fucking chocolates flowers and you know sitting on that lovely fluffy cloud i think it's been too overwhelming and she hasn't got the tools in her toolbox to be able to deal with that so rather than saying, I don't know how to help you, but I'm here for you. She thought, fuck that, not interested, don't know what to do, fucking hell, I'm off. There's a trigger there, I think there was a trigger, and I think what you've got to learn from this is, even though that person has let go of your hand, we can't expect anybody to be there for us when we are in dark days. We have to take responsibility for our own health, our own mental wealth. We have to take responsibility and make sure we're getting the correct help and support from professionals. Then we have to be open with our friends and family who know us the best and for the longest in order for them to know what we've been going through and what we are going through. But I think this girl doesn't know you enough she doesn't know enough about you to be able to sit there and think how do we deal with this it's a trigger in some form she's run for the hills let her keep running you concentrate on your own mental wealth get the help and support and the guidance that you need make sure that your friends and family are aware of what you're going through and god forbid you are in that dark place again and you feel suicidal take responsibility please by telling people around you how you've been feeling, it gives them the heads up of when you may be not looking well and they can get help for you. But be honest and open with people. I'm not saying don't tell people in your life because it's okay not to be okay and it's okay to tell people I feel suicidal. You shouldn't keep it to yourself. But she wasn't the one for you. And sometimes we do meet people in our life that... They haven't got the tools in the toolbox in order to be able to assist you when you're going through a bad time. So I wish you, well, please don't look at it as a personal failure, just as a learn, because every day is a fucking school day. And you carry on being your true self, and I'm sure you will meet a lifelong partner who will never let go of your hand, darling. Sunday service, please, Antonelli. I have been seeing a guy for a month and I really like him. He's just graduated with masters and he's looking for jobs some hours away and would have to relocate. He's applying for jobs where we live but end, may end up... Eh? May, may end... What? All right, okay. I know it's early days. Right, I've been seeing a guy. Oh, she's been seeing him for a month. I know it's early days but should I keep seeing him? He may end things in a few years if he relocates and I don't want to be heartbroken. Any advice would be great. Thanks, Nelly. Fuck a duck. If we took our own advice there and ended every relationship in its infancy because something might go wrong or they might cheat or they might go on a lad's holiday or they might turn to drink and drugs or they might gamble or they may relocate with work or they might die we'd never fucking have a relationship why don't you just take it day by day hour by hour if you like him and he likes you you've been going out for a fucking month that it is very early days see how it goes you might not like him in three months time and think we've had a nice time but it's not really for me 
Don't be looking too much into the future because nobody knows what tomorrow's going to bring. You might right like him and he might not like you. He might fucking quit you regardless of whether he relocates or not. We can't worry about what if and what might and what about this and, and don't close your heart off. Enjoy life for what it is. If you've got someone in your life, you've been together a couple of weeks, you like them, they like you, enjoy time together, enjoy each other's company. Today is all we ever have. Tomorrow's not promised to nobody, not promised to anybody. So don't be putting things in the way, don't be sabotaging your relationship before it's even fucking started for things that might not ever fucking happen. You know what I mean? I mean, sometimes I think we do have these anxious little birds in our head that tell us things, yeah, but what about this? What about that? Don't listen. Just go with today. Dear Auntie Nelly, I have been friends with a girl for 25 years and over the past four years we've drifted apart. This is down to her boyfriend who makes me feel really uncomfortable. When I have been going round, he's asked me if me and her have ever done anything sexual. He also speaks to her very disrespectful and this is the reason why we have drifted apart because I told her I was not okay with it and stopped going round. I found his, be uh, be found his behaviour unacceptable. Christ on a mic in date Steve Jensen. I've asked her if she were okay and I find his behaviour unacceptable and her mum has also blocked me now on social media. This, the reason I think this has happened is because I spoke the truth and that's why we've drifted apart. When I spoke to her about things, I was made to feel like a shit person. What do I do? Do I move on from this and forget her or try again to see her, to see her away from him? Thank you for your advice. Sounds to me like your mate's picked a partner and it sounds to me like her mum can't be asked with all drama and all shit so she's fucking took herself off social media and thought, fuck that. She is in a relationship with somebody who thinks it's highly amusing by saying, oh, because you two have been best mates for 24, 25 years, I bet you fingered each other one night, haven't you? Whether that happened or not, it is no business of his. And I find that quite childish behaviour. It's not even banter that I find quite amusing. The way he speaks to her and disrespects her may offend you and upset you because you're her best friend and you love her and you've known her a long time and you want the best for her. But she's deciding to be in that relationship and in a relationship there's two people, not three. So you put your two pence in, she didn't want you to put your two pence in and she's decided to fucking back off. Let her. Once again, when we feel like we're made to think that we are darkening people's doorsteps. Never knock on that door again. You've said your piece. You've said what you wanted. At the end of the day, you've drifted apart, as sometimes friendships do. Wish her well. Wish her love and let her crack on. Should she ever need you, you'll be there to help her and support her, as I'd like to think she would be for you. That's a friendship. But if you never, ever hear from her again, She's made a bed. She's got a fucking lie in it, sweetheart. She is independent. She has to be responsible for her relationships. That's being with somebody who you feel is disrespectful towards her or whether she feels that she no longer wants to be your friend. She's responsible to make those decisions and those choices in her life as an adult. So move on, darling. Absolutely move on. Do not try to keep putting your two pence in and making her leave her partner or making plans to make her see that is this, is that, because that's not your place to do so. Moving on. Hello, Nelly. Hello. I'm now 43 this year and I've gotten over my horrible past. My mother chose her husband over me when I was 12. She did this right in front of me at child services because he was being charged with sexual abuse against me and wasn't allowed to leave, live in the same house as me. Oh, dear God. I was then sent to live with my dad. When he, when he... 
I ended up, what? I ended up in a toxic foster care home and then was on my own from 16 years old. I've been homeless, lived in a caravan. Right, okay. Right, so this girl was abused and her mum chose her husband and because the girl couldn't be in the home with the predator, she had to go into social care. From that, she's been in lots of domestic violence relationships, she's been homeless. She has now got two daughters, which she says it's the only thing she's done right. But she's failed her little boy who isn't with me and she's never forgiven herself. She's disabled, she's got health problems and her health is getting worse and worse. However, her mother is now in a nursing home dying at 68 years old and I can't help but feel sad, angry about it. Why do I care? Why can't I just be happy? She was never a mother to me but I still care and it's eating at me. I've seen numerous therapists but nothing's helped. Why can't I just let go? Ooh, okay. You know, sometimes we're just not nasty, horrible people. Sometimes things happen to us that are not very nice. Sometimes people do things to us that we wouldn't dream of doing to anybody in a thousand million years. And that's probably why you care a little bit about this 68 year old lady that's now in a nursing home and is terminally ill. You care because it's another human being and you're putting her before you. And maybe that's what you've always done in your life. Maybe you've always put everybody else before you because you've never felt good enough. You've never felt worthy. And you have got these issues of abandonment and self-worth. You said you've seen plenty of therapists and I hope they're assisting you with that. I am not a professional. But what I will say is, you're empathetic to this lady. She brought you into this world. And it's incredibly sad that she's got a terminal illness and is about to pass away. But deal with your abandonment issues and your self-worth issues with your therapist. But I think it would do you the world of good before you let go. If you can't see this lady face to face, then write a letter. Write a letter to her telling her exactly how this impacted on your life from the age of etc to the age of etc. Tell her what she did, tell her how it made you feel, but also tell her that you're incredibly sad that this is happening to her and you wish her no harm and you hope that she has a nice ending to her life and goes in peace. You've got to do that to be able to let go. So you've got to forgive. I'm not saying forget, but you've got to forgive. And you've got to forgive in order to give yourself the self-love and the self-care that your soul so desires. Sometimes we are just not made that way. You're not made the way to hate and blame. You're just looking for why, because I never would. And because you never did, that makes you really question why. But at the end of the day, you probably spent most of your life grieving for the relationship that you wish you had with your mother and didn't. So tell her that in the letter. Pen the letter to her, send it her with love, and then you can start looking at the closure you need so much in this relationship, and then you can let go. Whilst you're in this limbo, that's probably why your health is uh, not getting any better because it's probably eating you away and that's how it manifests sometimes. So please keep seeing the therapist and pen that letter to her if you can't see her in person and, you know, tell her that you forgive her and it's okay. And let go. Let go. You have to let go. We don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, if it brings anything at all for us, but you've got to forgive her for everything that she did and you have to live the rest of your life to the best of your ability. I'm so sorry that you didn't have a mother in your life that stood up for you. I will, I will apologise on behalf of all adults out here when you were a child. 
that absolutely she should have stood up for you. Absolutely. She should not have chose her husband over her little girl. Absolutely not. So I will apologise that that happened to you because you didn't deserve it. You should have always been put number one. That's what a mother is. She was no mother to you. But maybe that's because she didn't know how to mother. I always say you can't change what you can't acknowledge. Maybe she didn't have the tools in her toolbox because of maybe she wasn't brought up the right way. She'd not been shown how to parent. But one thing you can do is congratulate her on how to show you how not to parent. Because I always say you've got to always... It doesn't matter how flat you make a pancake, it's always got two sides. And you've got to sometimes take the rough with the smooth. And there are people out there who've had incredibly difficult childhoods and they grow up and they blame the difficult childhood on maybe the drug addiction or the fact that, you know, they can't get on in life. Or, and then there's other people who'll say, that difficult childhood made me realise that that's not what I wanted for my children. So, you know, you've got to congratulate her on how, how not to parent. So, you know, write that letter and then let it go. Please keep working with your therapist. Work on your abandonment issues and um, know that you are worth it and you are enough. We are all enough. Moving on. I am 37 and I am attracted to my boss who is 52. I flirted a bit and I think he knows. But he's quite shy. I don't know how to move things on or find out certain whether he likes me without scaring him off. What should I do? Well, I always say, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Don't shit on your own doorstep. If your boss wanted to take you out or wanted anything to come from it, then he'll ask you. You've made it quite clear that you fancy him. You've done a bit of flirting. Fucking back off now and let him pull his socks up. And if he, you know, if he wants you, he wants anything to happen, let him ask you. But if anything does go a bit wrong, or you, you know, you're barking up wrong tree, or sometimes people can be really nice and really friendly, and you think they're flirting and they're not, they're just being nice. You know, have you got another job to walk into? Because paying your rent, your gas, your electric, your TV license, and every fucking else, you know, it gets a bit difficult when you've not got a job. So. You know, at the end of the day, you said what you said. You've told him you like him. Let him make the next step. He might be shy, but he's fucking 52. He's not been born yesterday, flower. And he might just be being ever so professional. Because a lot of people think I'm a flirt. I'm not. Well, I don't know if I am or not. I'm just, I'm saying with everybody, me, girls and boys, uh, next door neighbour, uh, fucking people who come and collect bins. I'm just nice to everybody. So he might just one of them people that's a bit like nice to everybody and you might think, oh, I fancy him, he's flirting me, he said this, he said that. Sometimes we make up scenarios in our head that are not fucking true, simply because we like somebody. So, moving on. Dear Auntie Nelly, please be anonymous. I don't need to be anonymous, but you can be. I'm not one to usually do things like this. I have been with my partner now for four years and was previously with him for three years but we split up for four years in between. I hope this makes sense. No, it doesn't, hang on. You're away for four years, then you split for three. And then previously with three, part of, you've been with him for four years. Oh, I don't, right. At the beginning of the relationship, this time we spoke about marriage and he seemed keen but there's been no sign of a ring right okay we have children in a house together so I don't think it's a commitment issue I'm worried that if I bring up the subject he will react badly but it's something I really want now should I keep quiet or should I bring it up in conversation right so the beginning of this dear Auntie Nelly was absolutely fucking irrelevant you're living in the same house you've got kids together why do you want a ring on your finger and that bit of paper? What is it going to change, number one? Number two, you're worried that if you bring up the subject, it will react badly. Who the fuck are you with? Why would you, being honest and open about your feelings and your future with a person, make that person react badly? That, to me, is a massive red fucking flag. Maybe he hasn't got 
commitment issues. No, because he lives in the same house if you ain't got kids. Maybe he doesn't see it as a thing that you need to do because you're literally man and wife anyway because you live together. Why do you want a ring on your finger? That's what I would be asking myself first. Before I bring up the conversation with him, don't ever be afraid to talk to your partner. If you're frightened of talking to your partner, you're walking on fucking eggshells around your partner. You're not in a relationship. It's controlling. It's coercive. You're scared. That's a massive red flag. Do you really want to marry somebody that you can't actually have a conversation with because he might react badly? Those are the questions that you need to be asking yourself before you even think of the fucking fairy tale of rings and fucking dresses and cakes and fucking balls. So I don't like the sound of this. Have a think about what it is that you actually want and do you actually just want to get married to anybody? Just get married? Or do you actually want to marry this man that you can't actually conversate with because he might react badly? And that you've been up and down in the relationship with like a bride's fucking nighty anyway. You've been on, you've been off, you've been on, you've been off. That, what is that teaching your children? What is it teaching your children that you can't have an open and honest, frank conversation with your partner because he might react badly? So I don't really think here is the dear Antonelli about I want to get married. I think the dear Antonelli here that I'm picking up on, you're with somebody that you can't actually communicate with. And if you can't communicate with your partner, you haven't got a fucking partner, have you, Flower? So I won't even be bothering ringing registry office. I'd be sitting down and saying, listen... There's things sometimes that I want to talk to you about, but I can't because I can't seem to get you to be able to speak to me about things without reacting badly. Why is that? Dear Auntie Nelly, hope you're well. I am okay. I have a problem with a neighbour recently, found out she's been calling me names behind my back to a new client that I was going to clean for. She's told them I'm a thief, yet I have a full and clean DBS for work purposes. I am a private cleaner. As well as other things, to find out that she has totally pied me off as I've done so much for her and her alcohol habit. Oh, I try avoiding her and not talk, but it's causing me anxiety when I see her. I must pull up every night and she's in the window waving when I'm secretly thinking, bitch. What would you suggest? Many thanks. What? You've got a full and clean DBS, right? You're a private cleaner, right? So I'm sure you have to give that to the client before the employer. A neighbour has recently found out she's called me names, right? So next time you pull up outside your house and she's waving, go over. I say, hey, Flora, you all right? How are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right, sir. There's a bit of a rumour going round that I'm a bit of a thief, but I've got a clean fucking DBS this year, right? Well, you let me know where it's coming from. Anyway, I've not been round for a brew later because I'm really busy with my private cleaning jobs. Take care, flower, and see you soon. That's it. Cut all conversation, get back in your house, make a cup of tea, and look in your diary and see who's house you're going cleaning up tomorrow. Because the last thing you need to be doing is cleaning up her fucking bullshit should it be coming from her. Concentrate on your own. Stay in your own fucking lane. Sounds to me like this woman's probably bored, lazy, tired, unhappy, and she's trying to find things to pick on for everybody else. So that's what you do the next time you fucking pull up outside her house. Don't be thinking, bitch, go over and say, Hiya, Doris, how are you doing, Flower? Are you doing all right? So have you heard? Apparently I'm a thief. My fuck, I've got a clean DBS anyway. I've got many clients tomorrow. I'm going to have an early night. Nice to see you, Flower. If you do find out who's saying anything like that about me, will you let me know so I can put a stop to it? Ta-ra! Move on. <sighs> now then. Dear Auntie Nelly, if you're a friend, if you're a friend, if your friend, if your friend has become bridezilla and won't stop talking about her wedding, but you find out her fiancé has been cheating. <gasps> oh, do you support her and let her go on with planning? Or do you ruin it for her and tell her the truth? Add into this that she just found out her daddy's dying. 
and she wants him to walk her down the aisle, what do I do? Shut up and put up, knowing one day their marriage will end in tears. I tell her the truth and potentially end the relationship in a year. She'll need her partner more than ever. Oh, my brain hurts. Her lovely dad is dying. Would you not rather spend those past, those... Would you not rather spend those precious few moments with your dad? Because once they're gone, they're fucking gone. So how do you know that he's cheating? Is it true? Is it actually rumour or is it fact? And if it is actual fucking fact, have you been a sinner partner and told him that you know? Is it going to happen again? Is it something that he's having an affair and it's continuous? Was it a one night stand? You've all these questions. Yes, what do we do here? Do you shut up and put up? I can't keep the fucking gob shut me and that's why I've got about three friends. Because um, to tell the truth and I can't help it. And this girl's going to lose her father. Um, and she's going to go through all the heartache of losing a parent and grief. But is she not going to go through all the heartache and the grief of having somebody that actually is just going through the rigmarole of getting married but actually do not love her that much? Is she not actually better off not marrying a fucking cheater and concentrating on her dad who's poorly, regardless of whether she wants him to walk her down the aisle because that would be lovely before he goes. But her dad won't want to be walking her down the fucking aisle with a fucking cheating cunt, will he? So, I'd be telling a partner what you know and making sure that you've got proof, facts and evidence and I would be telling my friend, I would have said, listen, this is fucking horrible, it's disgusting what I'm going to tell you, it's breaking my fucking heart but if I don't tell you, I can't sleep at night. Whatever you choose to do with the information I give you, I am your best friend. I love you no matter what decision you make and I will always be here for you. If you still want to get married, you still, I will stand there as your bridesmaid and I will fucking clap and cheer from you. If you decide you don't, I will stand at your side and hold your hand and I will be there for you in all the difficult times that you've got coming up. That's all you can do as a friend. But you can't sit back knowing what you know now. So tell a partner that you know, but also tell your friend. And put it like that. I don't like what I'm going to tell you, and I hate that I have to tell you this, but I have to fucking tell you. And I've told you now. And if you don't want me in your life anymore because of what I've told you, that's fine. But I need to tell you. Not because I'm uh, selfish, but because you need to know in order... To make the right decision for life because life is short life is precious as you know and that's it I mean, what can you do that's all that's all like yeah because yeah she might even turn around and say yeah i know i know but we're working through it it's all right and we dad being poorly you know we're still going to get married so can walk down the aisle but at least then you've done your bit as a friend because god forbid anything comes out Oh, and you knew, and she knows then that you knew and you didn't fucking say anything. Christ on a fucking bike and Mary on handlebars. Dear Antonella, I have a problem. Please, can you help me? Well, I'll try. I'm 34 and I've become very broody and know my clock is ticking. Tick tock. I have been with my partner for three years now. In the beginning of our relationship, we discussed children. And he was convinced he would like another. But I was adamant at first and said, no, I wouldn't want children. However, I'm going to change my mind and I would really like a baby. But my partner doesn't. I feel silly that he really is one in a million. And why would I not choose to have my final baby with the one person that means the world to me? Do I just shut up and hope my broodiness goes away or sit him down and risk my relationship ending? This is where that bit of advice comes in, never say never. So when somebody says, do you want kids? I think unless you can't have them, I don't think you should ever say never because you never know, do you? And obviously now you find yourself in a bit of a conundrum. 
he's now changed his mind and he's not right asked about having a kid and he didn't really know that you wanted a kid because you said you'd never want a kid. So what we got missing here is communication. I doubt very much that if you do start communicating with him on exactly how you feel, because he already has a child, so he'll know what it feels like to have a child, that it will be the end of your relationship. Have you already got children or has he already got children? I'm ever so confused. But yeah, tell him that you want kids. Tell him that you love him. Is that the man of your dreams, the person you want to spend the rest of your life with and you want a little him running about, you know, and, and that's it. I, do, I wouldn't, once again, we should never be afraid of having an open and frank discussion with our partners about anything. Because if we are afraid to talk to our partners, we're not in a good relationship. We're all not in a good place. We should never have to walk on eggshells about our partner. We should be honest and open with them about everything. Yeah, we can tell the little white lie here and then about certain situations. Of course we can. But we should always be able to go to our partner about anything. And it's okay to say you didn't want that red dress three weeks ago, but you do now because it's in sale and you wish you'd have tried it on the way. You're allowed to change your mind. You're allowed to. And if you don't communicate with him, how do you know what he's going to think? And if he does leave you, there's going to be more problems than the fact that you just want another child. Absolutely. Have the conversation, sitting down at the hashtag kitchen table, tell him how you're feeling. Tell him your concerns, say, I'm really worried that if I tell you this, you might quit me. I hope you don't, but guess what? And talk to him about it. And that's been today's Sunday service. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. If anybody does comment on your comments with prize giveaway gift winner, it is a scam. Any advice I have given on today's show has been purely for entertainment purposes. I am Antonella, the Uncensored Reviewer, and I will come live if I have any dear Antonellis. If there are no dear Antonellis, then I can't come live. So if you do have a problem and you want it solved, please write into the page. Hopefully I'll see you on Wednesday night for night time with Nelly, but as of now, I don't have one dear Antonella for Wednesday night. So I reckon everybody's having sex and really having a nice time and there's no problems anywhere. So where are you, shitlord? Right into the page and I'll see you all very soon.